The Ryan VZ-3 Vertiplane represents one of the earliest successful vertical and short takeoff and landing aircraft designs. Designated internally as Ryan Model 92 and later VZ-3RY, this experimental aircraft emerged from Ryan Aeronautical Companies to revolutionize aviation's operational flexibility. The VZ-3's engineering centered on blown flap technology, redirecting propeller-generated airflow over massive trailing edge flaps. The high-wing monoplane featured an Avco Lycoming T53L1 turboshaft engine producing 1,000 horsepower mounted within the fuselage and driving two large diameter propellers through a central gearbox and parallel drive shafts. The wing's most innovative feature included extraordinarily large double retractable trailing edge flaps that extended nearly vertically into the propeller slipstream, creating a box-like configuration with prominent end plates. The three blade propellers, each measuring 2.79 meters in diameter, covered almost the entire wing's frontal projection area, maximizing airflow redirection effectiveness. Control systems varied across flight regimes. High-speed flight used conventional rudder and elevator surfaces, while low speeds required a universally jointed jet deflection nozzle at the aircraft's rear for hover control. Roll control was achieved through differential propeller thrust rather than traditional ailerons. Ground testing commenced on February 7, 1958, with the first flight on January 21, 1959. The aircraft demonstrated impressive short field performance, requiring only 30 feet for near vertical takeoff at 25 miles per hour, with hover capability up to 3,700 feet altitude. However, the 1,000 horsepower engine proved insufficient for true vertical operations, requiring headwinds for optimal performance. Ground effect phenomena below 15 feet created handling difficulties. After a crash during the 21st test flight in 1959, the aircraft underwent reconstruction. The tailwheel configuration was replaced with tricycle landing gear. The enclosed cockpit became an open design with only a small windscreen and fabric sections replaced portions of metal fuselage covering. NASA assumed control in 1960, continuing evaluations until 1961. Testing revealed optimal performance at 20-25 knots, 37 to 46 kilometers per hour, achieving takeoff runs of merely 9 to 10 meters. The aircraft's speed envelope extended from 6 knots to 80 knots. Despite its vertiplane designation, testing confirmed it could not achieve true vertical takeoff and landing. The aircraft measured 8.3 meters in length, 7.14 meters wingspan, and weighed 1,180 kilograms normal takeoff weight. Landing operations required pilots to maintain approximately 20 knots airspeed when descending below 15 feet, with descent angles limited to several degrees. The VZ-3 program concluded in 1961 after extensive data collection. Today, the sole aircraft resides at the United States Army Aviation Museum at Fort Rucker, Alabama. The VZ-3's contribution to aviation technology established foundational principles for modern vertical and short takeoff and landing aircraft development, demonstrating the viability of blown flap systems for enhanced short field performance.